Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. My name is Martin Warwick. We're here at Mobile World Congress 2016 in Barcelona in Spain. We have a three-person panel with us now, and we're looking at a, an, an interesting subject, holistic digital experiences in a context-aware world. And let me introduce the panel. On my right is Dave Gibson, Hewlett Packard Enterprise Chief Technologist, Digital Context Aware. Dave, welcome. Thank you, Martin. Next to, next to Dave is Cliff Wilk, um, Hewlett Packard Enterprise Chief Technologist, Emerging Technology. Hi, Martin, how are you today? I'm pretty good, considering it's the last day of the show. <laughs> Thank you, I think we all are. And last, but by no means least, down at the end there, is Paul Ashwood, Hewlett Packard Enterprise Portfolio Marketing, Digital User Experience. Thanks, Martin, it's nice to be here. Good, let's get into it then, chaps. Um, Paul, let's begin with you. What is the next generation digital user experience? So next generation digital user experience, uh, all about using the latest in technology. When you think about the first generation of experience, it was, it was all about the mobile phone and mobile apps. But now we're talking about a whole range of technologies from smart watches to smart glasses to bands that do biometric sensing, all of this wearable and IoT technology and how it all comes together to create this end-to-end -end user experience that we call the digital user experience. Okay, nice explanation, very clear. Uh, Dave, let's come to you now. Um, what do you mean when you say contextual awareness? Okay, Martin, well it's about a machine or a person or a human. It's about bringing the right information at the right time to the devices or sensors on those machines or humans. And uh, that gives you contextual awareness. And all you have to do is turn on the sensors or devices and we do the rest. Again, bringing the right information at the right time to the right device or sensor on that human or that machine. Fine, also very clear. So um, if I could just kind of add to that. Please do. You know, contextual awareness is about understanding what a user's doing, what activities are, they're involved in. If they have to uh, go out on location, uh, understanding a schedule of, a of activities. Right, so we're using all of these different services and technologies to really help them become more productive in what they're doing by understanding their activities, delivering the right piece of information to the right device at the right time so that they're able to be more productive in the jobs that, th that they're doing. And I want to add to that, uh, What's also unique about what we do is we glue all these pieces together to provide that holistic experience from end to end. Uh, we don't see that in the marketplace right now. We see a lot of people doing contextual wear slivers of these things. We're able to take the slivers and glue them together and be very contextual wear, whether it's that machine or that human throughout their workday. Thank you. Okay, Cliff, yes, your sir. turn. Um, we talked about solutions. Um, how do these types of solutions impact the business itself? Well, we really focus on solving a real world business problem or a multitude of business problems. And that's really what you really want to focus in on. In the past, we built solutions hoping we'd find problems to be solved. We're actually taking from a new style of business process of looking at what is the problem, how can we use these devices in a collaborative manner? Because right now, these devices all work independently. They all have different operating systems, different ways to get them started. Sure. The real secret behind digital context aware is we make it so easy that we just have the users put the device on and they can do the job. They can do the function to solve the problem they need to solve at that time, at that moment. Thank you. Okay, now this one is to all of you, so chime in as and when you feel like doing it. Give us some real life proper examples of contextually aware digi digital user experiences. Who wants to start? I'll start. Okay. Yeah, Marn, uh, one really good example is a probation officer. This is a real life use case. Right. The issue with the probation officer is that the business problem is that 15% of the time when he goes and interacts with the, the criminal that he's trying to re rehabilitate, it's not the right person. So we solved that problem, right. okay? We also create a holistic contextual experience. 
So all he has to do is turn on his smartwatch, his tablet, and his smart glasses. And his smart glasses are, are very, uh, they look like a normal set of glasses, so they're not the nerdy looking things you, you see. So we, we picked the right form factors. All he has to do is turn on these devices, and we know where he's supposed to be throughout his day. We automatically navigate him to the first location. We know when he arrives. We vibrate the watch and say, you're supposed to visit John Doe. And uh, we automatically turn on the video streaming. We recognize the guy's face. We vibrate the watch and say, yes, that's John Doe. Or it's not John Doe. If it's not John Doe, he better get the heck out of there because he doesn't know who he is. If it's John Doe, he continues the interaction with him. When he's done, he does uh, voice to text case notes, closes out the case, we navigate him to the next location, the next uh, probationer he's dealing with. After he finishes that probationer interaction, he goes to lunch, he's able to halt the process. When he comes back from lunch, the, the watch vibrates and says, hey, your battery's low on your tablet. You might want to you know, turn that one off and turn on uh, your smartphone and do navigation on the smartphone. So that this, that's a, a, a simple example of how we holistically glue the watch together with the tablet, with the smart glasses, to work together seamlessly without the probation officer having to do anything. Well, that was not an example I was expecting. Absolutely fascinating also, really. I'm glad you can turn it off. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah. It's quite a thing there. Are there any others, guys? Yeah. What, uh... Uh, we had a situation with a major automotive manufacturer that had a recall on a particular steering column. And if the mechanic fixed it in the way that a mechanic would normally fix it, step one, two, three, four, the problem would come back because the solenoid got powered at the wrong time. Yep. So we had to actually work with the different manufacturers to get the right order. We put them in the, in the correct order. Which the correct order was one, three, five, seven. If he went to a particular step and got stuck, he could tap the glass once and a schematic drawing came up in front of him of that particular part of how to fix it. If it still didn't take care of the problem, he could tap it twice and a video came up showing him how to fix the part in a video snippet. And if he still got stuck because something he wasn't used to, hadn't seen before, he tapped it three times and a live person in the control center could see the exact same thing he's seeing, help him fix it and get to the next step. So by going through the correct steps to fix it, they were able to solve the recall problem in a more efficient manner, and bottom line, increase customer satisfaction. Another astonishing example. But another aspect of that is that we could drive it with voice commands in, in, in addition to gestures. Astonishing, Paul. Um, another example is to do with sports stadiums. Uh, it's a solution that we call intelligent venues. And if you think about the user experience of going to an event, going to a stadium, uh, and so some of the solutions that we're doing would be things like help you find a car park, right? So when we know what seat you're in, we know what the closest entrance is, we know what the best car park is, we know where there's available car parks, and so we can immediately navigate you to, a, to an open car park so you can drive straight in there. Uh, now you can walk into the stadium, we can do facial recognition so we can recognize your face and we can welcome you to the stadium. Uh, from there you can actually get on your smartphone navigation. So now we can navigate you directly to your seat, the fastest way there. Or navigate you from your seat to the closest bathroom. And even find out where the longest lines are in the bathroom. <laughs> right, so you think about this from a digital user experience point of view. We're almost creating what we call the super fan, right? It's the fan that seems to know more information than any other person around him. Why? Because he's enabled by all this digital technology that's telling him what to do. And so things like in-seat ordering, where he can use his mobile phone to actually order and have things delivered directly to the seat. Uh, things like instant replay, where, where he can actually see a play occur on the field, and within a few seconds he's got that up on his mobile phone showing all of his buddies and they're looking at it from different angles. So it's all of these different capabilities that all come together to create this end-to-end -end user experience. It's astonishing that obviously it's got many applications in business, probation service and so on, but what kind of an impact is this going to have on the Android guy in the street, you know, the consumer? Well, when you really think about it, it gets down to how do you improve the experience? How can you make that experience better for the user or a customer's end user. Sure. Two, you can increase health and safety. Right now, more and more people are wearing different devices, different sensors to monitor health issues. Yep. They can do that. 
obviously the obvious one is how do you reduce expenses, how do you increase revenue. But what the real differentiator is with HP solution is we work holistically across different lines. We work with anybody's device. We work in a real seamless transition to make it focused on what is the customer's need we're trying to solve and how can we solve it using the right device by providing the right information at the right time for that particular task he's working on. He doesn't need to get to the stadium when he's here at Mobile World Congress. He needs to know at Mobile World Congress, how do I get to the right booth for the meeting I'm going to, or how can I get to the right seminar at this time on my watch? And that's what context awareness is really all about, getting you to where you need to be, providing the right information on whatever device you have. And that's really one of the things that HPE has done by having a seamless experience, being device agnostic, and really working across boundaries to make it happen. And it's also about solving business problems. So you don't come to DCA to buy IT widgets, I would call it, storage, security, cloud. We use those enabling technologies to create these business solutions, but we're selling a business solution. Also, from an enterprise perspective, uh, we're enabling the enterprise resources to be more productive and efficient. And we're doing that by uh, allowing them to do things more hands-free. Again, bringing the right information at, at the right time, the right device, not lugging other things around like they used to. And uh, that's a real efficiency thing there. We, we operate across all different industries. Um, and it really comes down to customer engagement on one side, or employee productivity on the other side. And employee productivity is all about efficiency, cost reduction. Customer engagement is all about revenue growth. And if you take scenarios like customer engagement, there's, there's another example we call smart traveler. And this is where you're going into an airport. Uh, we're actually using beacon technology to guide you through the airport. Right, so we know what gate you have to be at. This is all contextual information that our system is aware of. So we know how to guide you to the right airline to go check in. We know how to guide you from the check-in gate to security. What happens in the scenario when you, there's a flight delay? So we're aware of that flight delay. So now we might want to offer you a, some type of coupon to a restaurant um, as a way of saying thanks and, and understanding for the flight delay. But you have to be contextual aware enough to know that, A, do I have time? What if my next flight is in 30 minutes? Don't give me a coupon to a restaurant that I can't use. Or if I'm a vegetarian, don't give me a coupon to a steakhouse. So this is all about personalized, contextual understanding of, of me as a user, me as a consumer, uh, and, and how I can drive those different devices and those different interactions to make my overall experience better. Amazing. One of the real solutions also you want to take a look at is you might ask why are we, are we being device agnostic? And the main reason why is the devices we have today are probably similar to those six pound cell phones we carried around 10 years ago. <laughs> the devices are going to get better, they're going to get more features, more functionality, more life usage, et cetera. By taking a device agnostic function, we can take the best of anything we see here at Mobile World Congress and use it and bring it in for a customer solution, knowing that next year there might be a whole new subset of what the best solution, best device is. So always providing the customer with the best solution at that time. The other facet of DCA or digital context aware is that we built a robust partner ecosystem. We knew from the beginning we didn't have all the pieces. We don't manufacture a lot of hardware sensors and devices. So we built this very robust part ecosystem so we can glue all the pieces together. Like Cliff was saying, the disparate pieces of equipment together from different vendors to create these holistic experiences. Great stuff. Coming to the end, the last question to you, which is this. Absolutely fascinating stuff. So what does the future hold? This is only just beginning after all. What does the future hold for the digital user down the line? So um, we're showing demonstrations here at Mobile World Congress and already the smart glass that we're using is out of date. The vendor that we're working with has a brand new set of glass uh, released in the space of about three months. So this technology is evolving every three months. It gets sleeker, it gets thinner, it gets better, it gets faster. Camera resolutions are better. So what 
the abilities that we have to drive those different devices, the scenarios that we can create uh, are much richer now as these uh, technologies evolve. Yeah, there's going to be a lot in the space of wearables, things that are actually inside your clothing. And I know, Dave, you know, this is an area that's close to your heart, the, the whole wearable technologies. And so why don't you tell us about those? Yeah, so we're not only looking near term, we're looking at Horizon 2 and 3, right. which are further out there, and it's fascinating stuff. So we're working with uh, academia and, and different uh, type of research labs to look out in the future and we're designing our platform so that we can integrate those very quickly into a platform. So and we also see on the tactical side, every month we see something coming out. We typically add almost every month a partner to the ecosystem. That's how fast it, it moves. And so not only are we keeping an eye on today, and we create a platform that's very flexible so that we can uh, integrate with those devices. We're also keeping an eye out in the future. Uh, wearables, like Paul said, they're going to be integrated into your clothing. Okay, and that's going to be, you know, that's that's part of the future trend. There's a, a lot of other future trends, and uh, it's it's very exciting. I'm very passionate about you know the now in the Horizon 2 and Horizon 3. It's incredible how this technology moves and, and, and what's coming down the pipe. But you our platform the, will be ready for it. You take the example of the digital hospital or the hospital bed. You go to a hospital bed today and you're covered in wires as a patient. If you want to roll over or go to the bathroom, it's a real ordeal to get up and do that. The, the hospital bed of the future will have no wires. Everything will be sensors they just place on your body. Even sensors inside the sheets that you lie on. Right, so that can measure blood pressure, that can measure oxygen levels, that can measure hydration levels, right? All done through wireless, all done seamlessly. So that's the sort of future that we see for these types of experiences, which ultimately create a better experience for, in that scenario, the patient themselves. However, we go beyond just situations. So our platform can handle context awareness at work, at home and at leisure. So we follow the whole gamut. Okay, we're the Indian experience. As Dave mentioned, you have different needs for every part of your life. Sure. So for example, how can we integrate what you need right now into providing the information you need right now? And you're going to have more and more. So if you look at it, it's really probably um, the best time to be a consumer in this world because you're getting more and more opportunities, more and more information. Like you think about the first cell phone did one thing, you talked on it. Yeah. Then they had map application, people thought, wow, this is great. Now, you know, you're gonna have tremendous amounts of information, data, and things come at you from all different directions. And the real key will now be, how do you manage that information to give you what you need at this point to do what you're doing? Absolutely, sorry. Yeah. Last, no, enough another aspect we're running out of time, so we'll okay. have to. We'll, no, you can say it, Mahomet. I'm just saying we're running out of time, so make it brief, and we'll. Okay. Another aspect of, of it is that each device has its its strengths in different areas. So devices, uh, some of them are multifunction, and so we can take the best of each device, those functions, and we can integrate them together, which is a very powerful thing. Absolutely fascinating, superb panel, gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Thank Marvin. You, Martin.